okay welcome for today's class welcome to today's class so it is uh, about proximity sensors that we'll discuss today it is mostly non contact type of sensors proximity sensors are not non contact sensors and capacitive sensor two different type we will see both are non contact type whether it is inductive or it is a capacitive type is there any sensor which is sensing proximity and it is of contact type doesn't have a meaning actually if it it has to come closer to an object in order to detect it okay it can be a um, linear displacement sensor if at all you reach to a value below some value it detects it as a proximity that can be a displacement sensor which is a contact type of proximity sensor okay but yes there is physical contact normally that is not used okay again so we'll see how it is done so this is one very broad type of sensor which is shown here which is known as inductive proximity sensor inductive proximity sensor the construction and the working is something like this so let us say you have a resistance which is here which is shown here this is a resistance this is inductance it can be a uh, externally attached inductance or it is part of the circuit itself which is forming some which is giving you some inductance value okay so again you have a capacitance in the series okay and this makes a closed loop this makes a closed loop and there are two resistances first resistance is the coil which is mounted here obviously this coil will also have some inductance denoted here as li that is inductance ri is the resistance of this coil so overall this is a coil which has its own resistance and inductance so you see this whole circuit is nothing but inductance capacitance and resistance or lcr circuit so this is a loop this is a loop if you excite it using an external supply if you supply externally at certain point over here this is ground and this is the point where i am applying some external voltage okay applying some external voltage through vcc okay so now it has some disturbance within okay that may be uh, stable until unless you do some oscillation it remains static but as soon as if there is any oscillation so in order to generate uh, impose an external oscillation what type of signal which is here is something like an ac signal so if you put in ac signal this whole of the system will have a varying voltage across this capacitance that causes this whole loop to have an oscillating current okay it will have an oscillating current to and fro and that is constant as long as there is inductance over here with a constant inductance value resistance doesn't change over period of time capacitance doesn't change so that oscillation frequency remains the same and you see a constant frequency coming out at this measurement point okay at this point you see a constant measurement value that is the voltage that is not a constant that is basically as uh, as expected it is exactly same as the external signal which is fed from this okay so that particular oscillation that particular frequency will be sensed here but as soon as there is any target object which comes nearby to any inductor you know because of some mutual inductance between them between them the system sees a change in inductance value change in inductance value over here so any target object if it comes closer to the oscillating coil the inductance of that particular coil changes and that in turn will change the frequency of oscillation okay that frequency of oscillation in this loop to change if you can detect that change yes you are done so it does it with a distance even if it is uh, there is some distance so what are the components which are there you see there is an 
RC oscillator, there is an RC oscillator, LCR oscillator, resistance is part of the circuit that is why it is not mentioned. Okay, it induces eddy current in the target, it induces eddy current in this target that causes loading to this oscillator. This is known as loading of this particular oscillator. So, it is exactly the same way the way I told you. So, what happens? Now, you can get the changes at this measurement node. If this can be detected, you can detect the object which is coming near to this. Okay? And because this lines of force is not transmitted quite far off, so it has a limited distance. Normally, the range of such sensors are 1 millimeter to 60 millimeter, can be a bit more for some special type of focused uh, inductors, but yes, uh, normally it is 1 mm to 60 mm. Beyond that, you cannot see a tangible change, uh, change over here at this point. Now, based on that change, there is an analog to digital converter. This continuously keeps on checking the voltage and beyond certain threshold of that change, it triggers a high signal. It triggers a high signal and tells yes that object has come sufficiently closer and that gives you a signal of proximity. And moreover, you can adjust this distance. You can adjust this distance also. There are some potentiometer that basically adjusts the resistance of this coil so that you can change the flux distance uh, till the distance where this flux can be carried. Okay, so this flux distance can be varied by changing the field capacity. That is basically by adjusting this resistance. So that is how it is done. So you can tune this. Normally, they come as a single package system. The one which is shown here, it does not have a tuning uh, potentiometer. It may have if you design it, but normally they are not provided in industrial one. Rather, they package it as 1 mm for 1 mm proximity, for 5 mm proximity, 20 mm proximity, 60 mm proximity. It comes like that. They are pre tuned. Okay? And with that uh, thing, it can be totally enclosed with a very high IP class ingress protection class. It can be dipped inside water also. Nothing will go wrong. Okay? So, it can just give you a value of high or low. Type can be normally closed or normally open. What, what does that mean basically? Your triggering transistor can remain normally closed. As soon as you detect an object, it gets open. A sample application of that could be a uh, a float sensor, maybe a float sensor, you have a metal which is floating on a tank top. As soon as your tank is filled up, that float sensor will come near to your proximity sensor and you have to switch the motor off. That means normally that should keep it open, that should keep the valve open or the pump running as long as it is not filled. As soon as the tank is filled, you have to switch it off. So, that could be one way of doing it. Otherwise, if it is an obstacle avoidance robot in that case, anything if it comes nearby, your wheel should stop. So, there are two different requirements. One can be normally open or normally closed. So, these two are different arrangements which is there. Okay, Or you can have both the wires. You can have three wires, one for ground reference, normally open and normally closed. Whichever is possible, uh, required, you can use one of them. Okay. So, this is our sensing coil, it picks up the change in oscillation amplitude and processing circuit is there that processes and triggers at a certain threshold based on the setting which may be there. Okay? Solid state signal conditioning circuits are there and communicating, communicating unit is there. It can just be a digital signal high or low signal or it can be some sort of, sort of Maybe a serial communication device which is there which converts it to a serial data. Okay, that also is doable. Inductive proximity sensor, this type of sensor can be used the way it is shown here. Uh, this is what? This is just a flywheel which is rotating and what it has? 
it has slotted wheel that is a slotted wheel just like a rectangular gear sort of thing so whenever you it will come closer that means whenever you see the tooth which comes near to the proximity sensor it detects as one if you know num number of counts how many tooth do you have you can detect what is the angle this shaft has turned this is a way of doing it okay so this is one way of doing it to detect the rpm speed of this shaft angular speed of this shaft okay they are very very accurate as compared to any other technologies okay and you see this is a moving conveyor you have three proximity sensors anything that passes by it can detect okay it each of them can be of different ranges they have high switching rate it can be switched at a very high rate that means you can have a moving conveyor with so many objects kept there and it can move move at a very faster speed and you can detect each one of them independently so if there is some triggering time in between it if it goes beyond certain frequency it will detect all as high even though there are two objects which passes to very high speed it detects just one high so that may be the limitation if at all it doesn't switch at a high rate okay can work in harsh environment as you see it can be totally enclosed in a cage that is ip certified you can have water all around right it can be a float sensor or something like that got it it is well protected from dust it is uh, yes it is enclosed hardly any change can be seen due to change in temperature rough weather it is okay there is no moving part so it can Uh, be very very safe even high accelerations it should not see any change in the behavior it uh, works okay it gives you the signal okay so virtually unlimited number of operating cycle so it can detect because if there is no moving part nothing can go wrong if you go unlimited number of on off off on and off there is no relay also inside okay so it is all solid state device so they have a, infinite life almost okay virtually infinite life nothing is uh, immortal you should say low cost and maintenance obviously because number of components which are inside you saw it is nothing but lcr circuit with some analog input device and a trigger mechanism so it makes it very very inexpensive and there is almost no maintenance what maintenance you will do there is no scope for maintenance either you have it or you don't have it you have to change it if it goes wrong disadvantage is that this is what is expected only metallic target can be detected because it works on a ferrous thing coming near that causes eddy current changes or in that in that proximity the, the inductance see some sort of change and causes oscillation changes okay so there has to be some metallic object nearby which can carry a decay can be aluminum that is equally good okay but yes that has to be a metal a non metal cannot have an decay so it cannot change the the way it behaves okay so that is why it can detect only metallic target and operating range is very less you saw it is only 60 mm but that is quite good enough for quite uh, So huge amount of applications. Okay, now coming to capacitive proximity sensor. System is almost similar. Again, range. You see, it is range is again one mm to sixty mm. Output can be high or low. Digital high and low. Same types are available. Normally closed or normally open. No and NC type. Components of capacitive sensor is internal plate. capacitor plate is there okay internal plate capacitor is there got it so what is there what which looks like a plate you see uh, this is the dc supply this is dc supply and an oscillator this time you have a dedicated oscillator that is giving you some oscillation some oscillation okay that is the current sensor you have this is the this is what this is a current sensor so that oscillation is passed through this current sensor and you check dc output over here all the time now you have a plate now you have a plate which is here 
okay now you see what is going to happen let us say you came nearby even non conductor object like your finger can come nearby okay this becomes a capacitor this whole of this system becomes a capacitor how this is a air dielectric this is a air direct dielectric one plate was already there you become the another plate that is grounded so there is the circuit because of this is not a dc current ac current can pass through a capacitor so this also creates a circuit so this dc wavy signal passes like this and goes to the ground and from ground and this ground that completes the circuit so that is the way your touch screen also works okay you can touch it or you can even sometimes little bit off or the screen also it can work but they are designed to be touched okay even if it is not touching there is a layer which is there uh, sometimes your mobile phone can have a film on top of protective glass is there it is not exactly touching that gap is always there still it is detected why because that much of gap is acceptable okay so what happens you see this is how it works so you have a plate you become a plate you have already existing plate which is inside and this this circuit gets complete like this to this dielectric this is a capacitor and this earth and this earth which is here both are connected and that circuit is completed so as soon as that capacitance is added you see the change in this dc output because the circuit is now loaded with this additional capacitor you see that change and it checks it as one as an output it can be one as an output can be normally off as an output also so it has an internal capacitance plate and an oscillator threshold detector so that is this is the current sensor this is basically detecting um, current sensor this one sorry this one so this is the current sensor this is basically is the threshold detection beyond certain current because of this capacitor that is added you will see more amount of current flowing through this so as soon as current gets increased okay so it gives you a high value so that is the threshold detector it can be tuned again you can have tuning screw or it can be a fixed screw which uh, comes as a package and you again see this is a totally packaged uh, product and it is uh, previously tuned by the manufacturer themselves for different distances okay and you have an output circuit so again circuit wise it is similar as expected advantages it can detect both metallic and non metallic because both can change the capacitance of the system both even if it is non metallic or metallic doesn't matter air dielectric will change and this system will have different capacitance but definitely that will have a different current value and it can be detected got it so that is what it has a very good stability even inductance one was stable high switching speed same as that of inductor only thing that is we can see is it can detect non metallic targets also good resolution yes if at all it can be as adjusted with an adjusting screw you can precisely set the distance precisely set the distance it can be 5 it can be 5.2 mm also it can be 5.3 mm also maybe yes it is not exactly to that much uh, gap but yes it is precisely tunable not as bad as inductive sensor okay in case of capacitive it can be precisely tuned they are good in terms of power usage because uh, there is no i square loss you see the way it is con constructed there is no resistance which is there so it doesn't get heated up and it consumes less amount of power got it so that power consumption is less it can last for quite longer period of time that is the reason capacitive proximity switches are more popular in mobile devices uh, like an obstacle avoidance robot in your mobile robot this type of capacitance uh, proximity sensor is more popular not the 
inductive one now you know why you should select the other one they can detect targets through non metallic barriers also even sometimes if you have some occlusion and your object is on the other side through the glass also it can detect yes the range may differ range may differ but yes it works as in case of your mobile device even if you have a glass plate protecting screen in front of it it is able to detect the change in capacitance so that non metallic barriers it can work why non metallic because this um, permittivity of something which is metal is uh, very high so you, uh, your capacitor goes bad it is no longer a capacitance okay it has to be non metal so those barriers has to be non metal disadvantages are they are affected by temperature and humidity also why because permittivity of air can change with temperature and humidity there was some air gap that has different uh, permittivity based on temperature and humidity could be triggered by dust and moisture you see these are sensitive to dust because again it is dependent on dust uh, capacitance capacitance that permittivity if it changes definitely that is going to affect so eddy current is not much affected the magnetic fields they are not much affected by dust so that is the reason in case of capacitance proximity sensor definitely that is going to affect your sensor sensitive to noise yes because of noise because there was a plate that you saw inside that plate can have some sort of vibration and it can create problems yes that is why and difficulty in designing purely tuning for a particular distance that tuning is taking time linearity is good linearity here means the closer you come input and output they are linear that means something that you want to sense over here it is distance output voltage maybe it is proportional to the distance if that is the case linearity is better in this case okay it should not vary with the square of the distance output voltage should not vary with the square of distance over here it is almost linear for a good amount of distance so it is very well can be utilized for distance sensing also if at all required got it capacitive proximity sensor is not as accurate as inductive one although it can be more precise because of temperature and humidity sense so these are the reasons okay so uh, that's all for proximity sensors something which is known as limit switches this is very very commonly used in the industry i wanted to cover this because it is widely used that's all that this is the only reason and this also is a sensor although it is a contact type it is found in your fridge doors if you close the door your light should go off it should not remain on okay and in case of your car door as soon as you open your door sometimes you want your lights to be on at night so these are few things and float valves yes it works using this there are many uh, places where you will find your sometimes uh, while precise locating something precisely locating something you can have this thing even your robot for a particular angle if it reaches to a particular angle your there is a physical contact that is happening to this type of limit switches it limits your arm physically because this is an hardware it is not controlled through software as soon as you reach to a joint angle this checks yes you don't go beyond otherwise your motor will go bad or your joint will break or something wrong will happen okay you are not designed to run beyond that so you should have this even printers they have this okay so what is this basically it is nothing but a make and break switch okay as soon as it reaches there again it is of two type you have normally in this position this is normally make okay normally make this is normally on position as soon as it comes in contact this one will go off and this is in contact so normally close and normally open again it can have two different connections one could be normally open other one could be 
normally closed they are spring loaded so that it remains in one of the position all the time okay one of the position all the time okay as soon as there is any contact which is happening on this roller uh, it can be closed or it can be opened which is there inside this type of switch is also very popular this is known as a micro switch this is known as a micro switch this is there in the keyboard also in your keyboard also this is a pedal switch maybe in your sewing machine or a guitar you may have this percussion you can switch it on and off using this or you you can have a joystick a triggered joystick you switch on in different location different position there are different there are multiple switches which are there all around so depending on the switch lever whichever direction it is that particular switch will go on so these type of switches are very commonly used in industry okay so that is why this is a special slide i have added to, so as to not to exclude you something from something which is very very important and commonly found in industry okay that's all for proximity sensor so far if at all you have so force torque and acceleration sensors as i have said it is all dependent on each other if you can detect one you can design your equipment in a way that it can detect torque or it can detect acceleration also i'll show you how it is done professionally in these circuit so one very commonly used thing is strain gauge what is this it is age old thing there is nothing big inside it is just the resistance some sort of resistance it has a coil which goes this 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 back and forth and it comes out that's it and it is nothing but it is this is enveloped inside two foils okay this coil is en enveloped inside two foils tightly okay resistive foil you have hold it tightly okay now if you can stretch stretch this okay this sandwich this coil is sand sandwich between these two foils and all together is called as a strain gauge or strain rosette okay so it is ended with two leads where you can detect resistance now what do you expect yes as soon as you stretch it stretch it what you can see this resistance of this element will change yes quite easily expected why not because when you change uh, resist resistance is equal to rho a by l a cross sectional area will change and you will see that change length also will change so that will cause the change in resistance because of change in the shape itself those shape changes are although very very small which is done here but yes it is due to that reason only so gauge factor change in resistance with the original resistance by epsilon epsilon is nothing but strain change in length per unit length okay so this is this is what is denoting the strain this is strain and there is something which is known as a gauge factor so what do you expect delta r gauge factor for a given um, for a given strain gauge is constant g is not going to change resistance of this element for a given stp temperature pressure it is not going to change okay so rg is constant so you see delta r that is change in resistance is proportional to the strain again strain is length change in length per unit length so original length if it is something change in length so delta r will be proportional to change in length so resistance change is proportional to change in length so almost linearity is there to a quite good amount of displacement so that is the beauty of this type of strain gauge sensor and this is now the basis for designing various various types of sensors all rather all okay um force sensor torque sensor and everything okay so we'll go uh, next now so what do you see you may have a unidirectional load cell that you may call it as a force sensor what it is doing so you see force is equal to this is your age old formula for 
Young's modulus, Young's modulus is equal to force by area by strain, stress by strain formula. It comes from this. So, force is equal to strain into area into E. This is Young's modulus. So, force is proportional to strain. Force is proportional to strain. And if you can recall your earlier equation that, that was there, this one, if you substitute this, here you get this. So, force is proportional to change in resistance. The rest everything is constant. Area is constant. Young's modulus is constant. Gauge factor is constant. Resistance of the strain gauge original one was constant. So, force is proportional to change in area. So, now it can detect a unidirectional force at least unidirectional force. Now, how it can check the acceleration force is equal to force by mass uh, sorry acceleration f small f is equal to force by mass this is age old formula ok so you know that already now again i will substitute this force this equation to this what i get acceleration is equal to change in resistance into a constant so acceleration is proportional to change in resistance if at all mass of an oscillating accelerating object is well known, so change in resistance will cause change in will uh, that uh, change in resistance will be caused by this acceleration. So you can detect this acceleration based on your change in resistance. Okay. Now how to check this resistance change? That is a different issue. But yes, just if you are able to check the change in resistance. You can detect acceleration, you can detect force. Again, it can also detect pressure. If you also know the area, if you know the area, you can you know already the force, you can you know everything, you can detect the pressure also. So, what all things it can sense? All dependent variables which can be dependent on these, like torque, pressure, stress, flow rate, flow rate. If you have a venturi. If you can detect pressure at two different Bernoulli's principle, if you remember, if there is a venturi and you can detect pressure at two different points, you know what is the flow rate. So, pressure, change in pressure will be de detected due to that change in flow rate. So, the if flow rate can also be calibrated to this. So, all these senses can be done using this. So, it looks like this. A unidirectional force sensor will look like this. Let me zoom it further. What all things that goes inside? Okay. Let me zoom it further. So, this is it. So, what all things that you see here? Okay. So, now this is the load. This is the load element on which you are applying the load, and this is the elastic body. The body which is here, this is the elastic body where it is marked. So, load whatever you apply here ultimately comes to this. And this housing is definitely there. There is a diaphragm. Why is this diaphragm? That is basically a ceiling. So, any water if it comes from the top should not go into this electrical area. Okay. So, that is why this rubber ceiling is there. That is also known as diaphragm over here. There is a top diaphragm also which is here. So, that allows slipping of this moving load cell. This load, it comes on a metal body. This basically goes in and out. This is just to support. Diaphragm 1 is just to support that. So, that it cannot tilt. Okay. This is the diaphragm. Again, this is the elastic body which is actually getting deformed. So, what you do? You stick your strain gauge rosset on top of this on you know, let us say if you have an object like this you can stick your strain gauge rosset on top of this so if at all this body gets deformed your gauge will also get deformed so actually it is fixed by an strong adhesive this gauge is fixed on top of this elastic body with a adhesive okay so if at all you deform that body that strain gauge will also get deformed. 
now all the electrical connections are transmitted to a longer distance so this is how it is made okay so externally it looks like this externally it looks like this what all parameters it says uh, almost 10000 kg huge capacity it can be of huge capacity known as load cell unidirectional that's all so this at least this much of information is here okay okay so going to next how, what all different ways it can be used advantages are they are very very accurate water cannot go inside it is well protected air inside is conditioned it can be in vacuum it can be anything so there is no hardly any temperature change because it is well encapsulated within the system with the air gap it can be vacuum it can be a material which doesn't allow much temperature change to happen inside okay so they are very very accurate to the full scale almost 0.1% deviation can be seen they are readily available quite inexpensive because it is nothing it is just the sensing element is nothing and rest is the circuitry that is used to detect this okay so it is readily available quite inexpensive calibrated by the manufacturer this is what is used in your um, gauges that you see in the grocery shop okay it, this exactly similar thing okay that is there in the grocery shop also their load cell is very much similar to this they are calibrated okay again disadvantages they are bulky in size because this has deforming element inside which is metallic most of the time bulky in size rigid in construction that is not a disadvantage this is rather an advantage costly signal conditioning electronics may be required not always true because you have to just detect the change in resistance that can be detected just by having a voltage across that resistance okay voltage across that resistance is going to change you can have r1 and r2 and a voltage divider circuit so if that resistance is changed voltage across that will change okay not a good solution for oem original equipment manufacturer it is not a good solution design in application mostly it is used in design in application as when required you fit them but it normally doesn't come in fitted with some equipment because it needs what it needs on site calibration or not so that is why even if you purchase something like uh, uh, quite good amount of um, sometimes it comes but that requires annual uh, renewal of your certificates like a tensile testing machine in mechanical lab they also have this okay but yes they come pre calibrated and then you have to get it recalibrated every year that certificate is not perpetually valid okay it, it deteriorates with time because elastic behavior of the system changes with time they based on the fatigue that it that is coming so electronic balance if it is used electronic balance ulti, uh, universal testing machine that is there in your lab probably in mechanical lab dynamic suspension systems in automobiles if your suspension system is dynamic it can have a vibration sensor first of all so that it keeps on checking how much vibration is coming on and to how much depth it is getting in so if you want to dynamically adjust to the stiffness of your suspension system so you need to have this type of system this type of four sensor okay a six dof wrist sensor sometimes you want to do grinding job your robot end effector should be fitted with a force sensor a load cell so that you can maintain a constant force against the surface so that you can do polishing buffing grinding this type of operation any surface finishing task you need to have load cell or any assembly task if you want to insert uh, even a simple your pen in your cap you need to feel the forces so those forces has to be felt by the industry like a peg in a tube operation or any industrial assembly a gear assembly task a complicated assembly you need to have this type of force sensor in the robot end okay or even your joint can have a torque sensor which lets you do this if you have a joint torque sensor that also can be 
calibrated to check the forces at the end effector. Okay, and then to perform collaborative manipulation, collaborative manipulation task. What it is actually? If you want uh, an object to be held by two different robots and do something, one of them becomes a master, other one becomes a slave, so that one of them actually moves the object where it wants to take it, whereas the other one just follows it based on the forces that it can feel. Okay, if it feels okay, the other one, the master is trying to take me to left, I'll go to left. If it is trying to take me to up, okay, I'll go up. So that is how. So that is collaborative manipulation. Yes, that is what is collaborative manipulation. So that is quite commonly used again. Haptic feedback device, as in case of surgery. If you you have a device which is commanding, like a joystick, you are controlling a robot using a joystick, a master slave like system. So what again you can have you can you can you you cannot just command the robot wherever you command the robot should go you should feel the forces whether you are cutting a tissue or you are cutting a bone so that forces has to be felt back okay so it is both forward and reverse okay so that is the reason you need to have some haptic feedback so haptic devices for commanding the robot that is used in assisted surgery they also use force sensor got it to deliver force feedback to the gaming platform this is very very common this is very very common so where it is like uh, you have a uh, platform like even a simple joystick nowadays it lets you feel the force it lets you feel the force at least by a jerk Okay, if it collides with another car, your seat actually vibrates. Okay, so how that is happening? Because it is feeling the virtual force in the background, and that is it is generating by sense of some vibration. Okay, if it is uh, a real gaming platform, also you can have forces. Okay, so these are some of the applications. It is not just limited to this. It can be many. Okay. So virtual simulation and the training system is also there. Uh, the way I uh, also you may be one of my video that has it, which shows a person riding on top of a simulating platform, and it is a driving simulator. Uh, that also has it. Okay, so if it collides, your virtual thing collides, you can get a feedback. So these are some of the application of unidirectional and bidirectional or a three-directional loads and. I'll go to little higher up now. How to enhance the property of these force sensing? So, is it enough just to check the resistance? And if it is there, how do you check it? So, it is done by an age-old system which is known as a Wheatstone bridge. If you remember this, it looked like this. It has resistances R1, R2, R3, and R4. Okay, so normally if r1 by r4 this by this is equal to this by this so it is a balanced wheat stone width and you see gauge over here will have zero current flowing through it and voltage across these two points becomes zero and that is the balanced condition if any one of them if any one of them changes then what can happen if any one of them will change, it will allow this, this current to flow because of the potential difference that, that exists between these two points. Okay? So, how that is done? Output voltage due to unbalanced uh, Wheatstone bridge is given by this derivation is again an age old uh, physics uh, formula that you might have seen. If at all you apply a source voltage across these two across these two terminal so what do you see uh, if this is the resistance if this is the resistance r1 so all the resistance can be clubbed this way and you see the voltage that appears across this is governed by this equation the top equation now why i am using it okay so instead of having just one or 
one uh, wheat stone uh, one strain gauge normally you have more than one why you know as you know resistance is very much dependent on temperature resistance is very much dependent on temperature what can go wrong uh, let us say during day time it was giving some resistance value something you calibrated your equipment later on during the day time what can happen yes uh, because of the rise in temperature during day time that value will change and same calibration will not work okay so in order to compensate for that temperature you can have forget about these two now in the bottom one forget these two let us say these two are constant resistances okay so those two are constant let us say only this and this is there so one of them is the real one other one is the dummy one okay other one is the dummy one why this dummy is there because r1 and r4 both are on same side of the bridge that means r1 and r4 so effect of temperature on both will be same so this basically works like a compensator okay so you have a dummy strain gauge which is here this is the real one which you is exposed to the environment where you want to check the strain okay so you have what you have two different strain gauges one of them is just a dummy it is not seeing any force changes okay any deformation only one of them is seeing the change due to the deformation why this is there it is just to compensate your temperature so this is one very good use of having two of them so it acts like a temperature compensation now there can be four also okay what else you can have you have a beam you have a beam as you see here two of them can be fitted on the top two of them can be fitted on the bottom side of it why this is done again if one a pair sees an elongation another pair will see a compression is it not if at all this beam is trying to bend the bottom one will see the compression top one will be elongated so for a small deformation due to this huge change the combined changes okay you will see a huge amount of voltage that flows through this voltmeter is it not so basically having four gauges amplifies the amplifies the voltage which is seen here as well as because of two dummy in this case you will see what a temperature compensated system so it is amplified and it is compensated and change in resistance is now detected as a change in voltage over here is it not so this is how it is used and your your age old system which was wheat stone bridge is now very well utilized any change in resistance due to change in temperature is cancelled configuration can be quarter bridge strain gauge quarter bridge strain gauge circuit only one is used in this case you saw temperature will have significant effect quarter bridge strain gauge circuit with temperature com compensation only one is stressed other one is unstressed only temperature compensation is there but it is not magnified half bridge strain gauge circuit two used one is in the tensile another one could be in compression another full gauge circuit is also there as shown in the figure where all four combination are there so these are different combination with different advantages disadvantages but yes it is used in all four configuration okay so this is how a unidirectional load cell might look like it is done this way but yes in industry again you are never happy with something which is very very common okay so this time this time you see you are not happy with the load cell that is there in your uh, grocery shop you don't want to sense force just unit in unidirection okay what else do you want basically having a four sensor in just one direction is not enough okay because if you want to do grinding you are moving your grinding wheel as well as you are maintaining a constant reaction force from that surface 
so what is wrong in this because of that moving you will feel some sort of sliding force because of that friction and the vertical force there are multidirectional force which is to be controlled just for a simple operation like grinding forget about collaborative operation when i showed you one of the robot wants to move another one should follow master and slave system you should have multiple direction force cell how that is done that also i'll discuss okay so these are some of the uh, equations very basic equations which simply uses this formulas these formulas which are here for different configuration for in case of quarter bridge configuration when initially you have this output voltage will vary with this formula i'll share this slide or you can stop this video in between and you can see later on how the, they are related this these are nothing but standard gauge factor strain gauge source voltage one fourth of that will be the output voltage so based on strain voltage output based on the force voltage output okay so for different thing normally this gauge factor for um, standard shapes of rosset which is sold is almost around 2 okay and you have foil gauge with elasticity given by this hooke's law you know this very well for full gauge strain gauge circuit this is the formula and your strain in different directions are related like this this is given in most of the instrumentation book uh, engineering measurements book it is quite common half bridge again it varies like this and in common a standard load cell which is available in amazon and various online hobby shops this is the common one which you can see it is calibrated for 5 kg the one which is shown here it comes in a very good capacities almost around 20 kg is easily available okay this is the rosset which is fitted here and these are the wires where you have to do all this small circuitry a bar okay this is the load cell which can detect unidirectional load and these are different ways of doing it this is torque sensing okay this is how it is made okay now sources of error in load cell because of improper loading and orientation due to mounting these are the error warping error on bearing plates warping what happens it tends to peel off okay or it tends to bend sometimes so those errors are always there friction between the bearing plates and the load cell where did you see that i'll show you come back to the old figure which is there okay you have a diaphragm this should allow this load cell this particular sensing element motion if at all it is sliding with a very high friction over here this causes that friction this should be negligible got it so that is what so you that should be very very less okay so that friction should be less cross sensitivity because of adhesive and geometry of the gauge that cross sensitivity effect of one gauge on the other one can be seen also okay so that cross sensitivity design and placement of the gauges should be planned in such a way that should not happen so need not to worry about so much with the available different types of load cells you need not to worry about that but you should understand this can happen so that if at all it happens to you you can immediately rectify that error emi induced error because these are circuitry it should be sealed properly otherwise if at all you have a huge magnetic field which is varying nearby that also can create noise in this type of cell okay in this type of load cell so that is why it was enclosed in a metal enclosure why metal enclosure you must have heard of gauge cage effect so anything which is inside a closed enclosure you get to see very almost negligible magnetic field inside and that remains isolated so that is uh, one of the reason it is enclosed so emi protected systems are expected in this isolation with the any carrier frequency may be given bonded and wiring faults obviously it can peel off if ever adhesive is not well hysteresis fatigue the while loading it showed you some curve of voltage while loading while unloading it can follow a different track 
So you should know how much that hysteresis can be there. Fatigue effect. Over the period of time, it needs recalibration. Effect of moisture because it is an electrical circuit, that moisture will tend to have some effect. Temperature definitely. That can be compensated though. Creep effect. Cold flow under the load. For the same load, over the period of time, it tends to deform. Material tends to deform. Okay. That is eliminated by proper material selection. Non-linearity is there for large load. Poisson ratio is also considered. These are for um, uh, very, very strong load if at all you want to measure. You should take care of any lateral deformation apart from longitudinal deformation. So that is why that Poisson ratio also comes into picture. There may be some calibration issue. So these are some of the sources of error. Now let us quickly come to something which is used in industry for multiple direction, force and moment sensing. So major manufacturers are ATI, Shung. So they make this type of sensor. It looks like this. Now one of the voltage is related to a single force. Okay. But if at all you see a set of voltage from six independent strain gauges which are attached to something like this structure. If you see this one, this is a structure. You see you have a load cell which is here, you have load cell which is here, you have load cell which is here. You may have as much as six different load cells. Is it not? Because you need to have six load cells to detect six forces, rather three forces and three moments. Okay, so they are constructed like this with elements fitted at different pre-planned locations. Okay, so now what happens? How they are related? You see here, you have six different voltages: one, two, three, four, five, six. And you have a matrix of 6 cross 6, 6 cross 6, which relates this voltage to these external forces. Forces is a generalized force, so it is Fx, Fy, Fz, and 3 are moments. So now you can have 3 forces, linear forces, forces are linear, okay, and you can have moments in all the 3 directions. So this is what is the internal construction and mind it this will have this will have what um, a construction with six internal strain gauges each of them will have their own uh, wheat stone bridge conditioning circuit and whole of this will have a good amount of circuitry to transfer this signal to your pc remotely placed it can be analog signal it can be a uh, Ethernet based signal, Ethercat signal or some sort of industrial communication which can transmit this forces to very long distance. So that is why it is there. Got it? And a, 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 a grossly it can look something like this. Some researcher has published it. I have just picked it up, uh, picked it up from there. You see raw sets are clearly visible. It is pasted on an element which is like this. So, you can have a structure which is something like this, is it not? So, this is how a six dimensional four stock sensor works. This is known as six stock four stock sensor, and that is normally fitted over here, which can check. That is all. I think this is just a philosophy of understanding a four sensor for industrial application as big as a six degrees of freedom sensor. But yes. Hope I, uh, you have got the philosophy of this, if not uh, the understanding of 100%. This is how they are related. And this gauge calibration matrix is given by the manufacturer when they will give you this type of sensor to you. They will deliver, they will calibrate, they will give you complete calibration matrix. This is known as gauge calibration matrix. 6 cross 6 matrix will be given by the manufacturer so that you can directly multiply the voltages that you are seeing to this matrix and you can find out the forces which are coming. Got it? That is all uh, I think. With that uh, I would stop here for today I think. Just a sec let me see if I have.
planned for something else also? No? Yes. There is something again. So, hopefully this is again very, very clear. Uh, you must have heard of something piezoelectric based force sensor, piezoelectric based force sensor. But in view of time, uh, I'll stop here for today. I'll stop here for today. Definitely, I'll be covering this in uh, uh, next class, okay, in next lecture, okay.